strangest facts about ancient Rome. Ancient Rome is thought by many to be one of the earliest modern civilizations and serves as an essential building block for many of our present day societies. However, there are many strange facts that came out of Rome that you probably don't know about. From their explosive toilets to the strange habits of Roman nobility, here is our list of the strangest facts about ancient Rome. Number 22. Toilets Exploded Ancient Rome has public bathrooms that were basically huge holes that led into sewer channels. These tunnels would be so backed up with methane and could cause spontaneous flames to kick up from the toilet. Biting snakes were even reported to jump out and snap at you if you weren't careful. It might just have been a better idea to poop into a big hole that they dug into the dirt. Number 21. Public bathrooms were great hangout spots. Despite the fact that public bathrooms were probably horrendously stinky and apparently full of fire and strange beasts, they were actually places where people would socialize. Toilets had zero separation for privacy, and everyone would just be sitting next to each other like in a sauna. There were over 140 public bathrooms in ancient Rome in this style. Number 20. They dyed their hair. It would be easy to think that hair dyeing was actually a modern invention or idea, but humans have been decorating and dyeing their hair with pigment for pretty much all of history. This was especially true during the era of ancient Rome. Women, mainly rich women and nobility, would dye their hair with pigments from goat fat beech wood ash, saffron, and primitive bleach. If their hair wasn't dyed, then they might have worn wigs that were dyed. Number 19. No Soap While much of Roman hygiene was pretty modern, including regular bathing and a working sewer system, they didn't actually use soap to get clean. They would get clean by applying perfumey oils into their skin and scrape it off with a tool called a sturgle. Number 18. Urinated Clothing in ancient Rome, there must have been some strange ideas about cleanliness, considering all of their weird traditions. For instance, they used urine to clean the clothes because the ammonia was in it was thought to kill bacteria. This urine would be gathered by people called fulnades, who went around the city to collect it. Number 17. Gladiator skin cells were magic. Ancient Romans loved their gladiators, so much so that even their skin was said to have magical or healing properties. The loser of a gladiator match would have his skin cells collected by rubbing themselves in oil and scrapping off the dead skin to be used for epileptic medicine. The winner would have his skin and sweat collected for women to rub on their faces. It was thought that this would be some sort of aphrodisiac and make them irresistible to men. Number 16. Gladiator's Strange Energy Drink Charietters would use dried up goat dung in one of their most favorite drinks. The drink would include dope gung that was boiled in vinegar or ground into a powder, and it was then mixed into the drink. This would supposedly give them a boost in energy when they were tired. Who exactly was the first one to reach into goat manure and decide it was something that should be eaten? Number 15. Romans disliked philosophy. Rome produced some popular philosophers, like Seneca and Marcus Aurelius. However, they in general did not care for philosophy probably because it was a Greek invention, and Romans tended to think of them as slightly lesser than them, because of the whole conquering them thing. Philosophy was also a bit too academic and finicky for an athletic man who lived an active life and would serve the state. Because of their distaste for philosophy and exercises in thought, the Greeks saw the Romans as some sort of dumb jocks who thought the study had no use. Number 14. They were sort of prudish. While the Romans were known for their general sexual liberalness, they did have some odd rules when it came to the world of sexuality. They had a strict limit to social behavior. A Roman wife was not to let her husband see her naked after the wedding night. Some philosophers even said that a Roman husband should not have intercourse with anyone but his wife, which seems pretty normal now, but apparently was not a popular idea among anyone at the time. Perhaps this last idea is why they disliked philosophy so much. Number 13. Rome was multilingual. The entire empire of Rome once stretched across a huge swath of land, containing an estimated 65 million citizens within it. So while Rome was mainly associated with Latin, that is not the only language spoken. Languages like Celtic, Syriac, Cappadocian, and Thracian would have all been spoken in the countryside of Rome. Even the Roman elite would learn to speak the Greek at their status of high class. Number 12. The most popular entertainment. Archaeologists used seating capacities of Rome's public venues as a sort of rough index as to what the most popular shows to watch would have been. Surprisingly, gladiator battles weren't at the top of the list. 
Instead, the biggest show was held at a venue that could sit 250,000 people. That show was chariot racing. Gladiator battles were held in a stadium that could hold around 60,000 people. Finally, the least favorite show, held in a venue that had the capacity of less than 20,000 people, was the pantomime show, which was close to what we have today as a modern day ballet. Number 11, organic boat band-aids. Sadly, strange energy drinks weren't the only thing Romans used goat dung for. They also used it to patch up wounds. Apparently, people in Rome would patch up their cuts and scrapes with goat dung that had been collected during the spring and dried out. However, fresh goat dung would apparently have done just fine in an emergency. By today's standards, however, we'd like to point out that painting open wounds with animal droppings is probably the best way to get a gross infection. Consider using a normal band-aid instead. Number 10. Generals didn't engage in combat. Although paintings and stories and status would depict generals as grand heroes who would fight in epic battles, they actually would never go into battles. Roman generals were not really warriors as much as they were battle managers. They would only partake in the fight in the most extraordinary of circumstances. Even if it seemed like the battle was being lost, instead of taking arms to change the tide of the battle, a general would probably draw a sword on himself instead. Number 9. Rome was dense. Ancient Rome was said to have been at least six times more densely populated than America's dense New York City. It is estimated that a little less than 57 million people lived in the Roman Empire at its peak. Number 8. The Roman Colosseum was costly. It's been said that if the Roman Colosseum were rebuilt today, it would cost around 380 million US dollars. Yet, it probably only took them around 6 to 8 years to build, which is great considering the fact that there was no modern construction tools available to them. Though, work probably does get done faster when you have an entire class of people who do unpaid labor until they die. Number 7. Marble statues weren't white. While ancient Rome is almost synonymous with the revenant white marble statues, in actuality, these statues were often covered in bright saturated paints that would have made them stand out. Modern scientists and artists have recreated what they thought the old marble statues actually looked like, and they definitely have a different vibe to them. Number 6. Average life was short. Despite their many technological advances, experts believe that the average lifespan of an ancient Roman was about 20 to 30 years. This might be a mathematical accident, as there was a high infant mortality rate at the time. Some people believe that they lived longer than 30 years, and would even have lifespans comparable to modern day humans. However, other experts stick to the idea that 30 year old Romans were pretty much elders. Number 5. The Longest War Ever the largest conflict in human history is estimated to be the war between the Romans and the Persians that apparently lasted around 721 years. While it's likely that this conflict was more of an off and on thing, they did have many other conflicts and battles throughout ancient history. Their conflict likely came from both sides of the war, attempted to take land from each other in their climb for dominance. Number 4. Emperors Deliberately Poisoned Themselves Roman emperors had apparently taken up the habit of giving themselves microdoses of poison with the idea that they would build up an immunity to it. This poisonous mixture was called Mithridanium, named after the inventor Mithridates, who served at the King of Pontus from 120 BC to 65 BC. Number 3. Nobility accidentally poisoned themselves. The downfall of ancient Rome is sometimes pinned to the lead poisoning of Rome's elite and nobility. High-born Romans drank beverages and vessels made out of lead and even had modern piping that would bring water straight into their homes. Sadly, that plumbing was also made of lead. That means Rome's riches was actually suffering from long-term lead poisoning and eventually went a little cuckoo. Number 2. The Roman Empire was huge. At its biggest, the Roman Empire was pretty large. The entire Mediterranean Sea was surrounded exclusively by the Roman Empire. It once took up about 12% of the entire world's population, which is nothing to cough at. However, the Roman Empire was never the largest empire in history. It's actually the 28th largest one in all of history, behind empires including the British Empire and the Mongol Empire. Number 1. Purple was illegal. Throughout multiple times in history, it was actually illegal for someone who wasn't royalty to dress like they were. In ancient Rome, it was no different. Purple clothing was a status symbol reserved only for the nobility. 
It's not like lower class Romans could afford purple dye anyways, as it was made from rare murex seashells.